Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the sixth video in the series where we're building an app using MapKit with SwiftUI and Swift Data. In this video, we'll add to the feature set by allowing our users to set a marker for the selected destination by tapping on the map, and then display the location, look around preview, and add it to the destination's array of place marks if desired. Now remember, there is a table of content links in the video description below. So if you want to jump to a specific point in that video, use the link. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you're working along with me, you can continue on from the source code that you completed in that last video. However, if you just jumped in here and you want to work along, you can download the completed project from the last video from my GitHub repository. Just make sure you download the branch from video 5, the completed source code from that last video. You can see here that I've already started a new branch now for this video, and the completed source code for this video will also be in that GitHub repository. Links to both branches are in the description. One of the limitations of the search is that you have to search. You might see a location on the map, and that's where you want to place your marker and add it to your destination set of place marks. The other issue, as we've seen, is that some of the search results don't show look around previews, where if you were just meters away, it might. So we could just tap at a location and drop a marker. That would be fantastic. Well, in fact, you can. With MapKit, you can enclose your map in a map reader that, like Geometry Reader, provides you with a proxy for accessing size information about a given map view, and this map proxy has a very convenient function for converting the view's coordinate space to a map coordinate, which is what we need to create a marker. All we need to do then is to place an on tap gesture on the map, and it'll provide us with the coordinates that we can convert to that map coordinate. So let's see how that works for us. I'll embed the map in a map reader. And this will provide us with a proxy that we can use. And we'll use that in a tap gesture. So I'll attach that to the map, not the map reader, the map, and let it provide you with the position. Now, if I print the position to the console, in the preview, make sure you've got the console displaying and you're on the previews tab, you can tap on the map and you'll see the CG point as in the map's coordinate space. This isn't the location. So to convert this to a location, you can use the proxy convert function to convert the position from the local coordinate space and assign it to a variable called coordinate. If you option click on it, you'll discover that it's an optional CL location coordinate 2D object. So we can use an if let to unwrap it. And then let's print it to the console. When I test now, I see that now we're getting the coordinates printed. That's fantastic. We can use those. Let's replace the print statement and create an empty place mark. I'm going to leave the destination as nil because we might not like what we get here and therefore we don't want to add it to our place marks in our particular location, but we'll specify that the name and address are both empty strings. And then for the latitude and longitude, I can assign those coordinates latitude and longitude. And then I can use the model context to insert that place mark into our array. And that'll be the search place marks array because there is no destination set. Now, when you tap on the view, a place mark is placed. But what we want to do is to open that sheet immediately so that we can check it out and change the name and possibly add it to our array for this particular destination. Sometimes I'm lucky and I can tap on that new marker, but more often than not, I miss it and a new one is created. So why don't we assign the empty place mark to our selected place mark, which is that optional state property which should present a modal sheet. 
Well, if we test this out now, you'll see we have a problem. When you tap on the screen, a place mark does get placed and the sheet appears, but then it immediately disappears. And what if we want to tap on one of those yellow markers? If you tap, a marker gets created, then the detail view appears, then disappears quickly, and then our yellow marker opens. But when we dismiss it, that stray red marker is left behind. Well, the first issue is because the view refreshes when you add the new marker, and the selected marker state property is set back to nil. I have to admit that I struggled with this for a couple of days looking for an elegant solution, and in the end I came up with what I think makes sense and in fact will meet our needs. What we need to be able to do is to let the application know that we want to create a marker. And then we only allow the selection on those yellow markers to happen on the list if we are not in that state. So I'm going to create a new Boolean property called is manual marker and set it to false initially. Well, the problem is this tag. This is what's allowing us to tap and open them one of those markers when I tap. I want to disable this functionality if is manual marker is true. And I thought it might be easy to extract this group as a view or create a function, but it wasn't easy. And I think I'll just confuse things. So I'm going to take the easy route here. Let me cut out this entire group right now along with the tag. And I'm going to create an if is manual marker clause with an else clause. It's the else part where I want to paste in what I just cut out. Now for the if clause, where it is a manual marker that we're using, we don't need that tag. And we also don't need this group. We just need this if else contents from here. So let me copy it and paste it in here. And then in the on tap gesture, I only want to perform this content if is manual marker is true. So let me surround the contents here and only perform that if is manual marker is true. So let's test in the preview now. Tapping on the map does nothing. If we tap on a yellow marker, it expands and displays the sheet. Similarly, I can search the map. Let's look for museums. And I can tap on one of those search items, and it's displayed. Nothing's broken. That's great. So let me change is manual marker to true. Now when I tap on the map, a red marker is added, and the detail view appears right away. What I don't like is the fact that if I dismiss this sheet, that marker stays behind. I want to remove it if I don't save it. Well, we can add an on dismiss to the sheet presenter. So I'll add the on dismiss argument after the item and get its closure. And here we can check to see if is manual marker is true. And if so, I can call the map managers remove search results, passing in the model context. Remember when we create that marker, we leave the destination as an empty string. Therefore, it's one of our search results. Now when we tap on the map, the marker gets created. But when I dismiss the view, because no destination was set, the marker gets removed. What we need to be able to do now is to create a button that will toggle that is manual marker state. So first, let's set the is manual marker back to false. I'm going to place this button inside that safe area inset above that H stack where we're creating the search field. So we'll embed that H stack in a V stack. Then as the first element of the V stack, I'll create a toggle view using the is on label initializer. I'll bind is on to is manual marker. And then for the label, I'll create a label and I'll use the one with the system image. For the label title, I'm going to start with the string tap 
marker placement. And then I'm going to use string interpolation and the ternary operator to determine if is manual marker is true, in which case I'll add the string on, else it'll be off. And then I'll follow that with the system image using another ternary check on the is manual marker. And if it's true, I'll display the image map pin dot circle. Otherwise, I'll use map pin dot slash dot circle. And then I'm going to apply a font weight of bold, but I'm going to change the toggle style to be a button toggle style. And I can't quite see it well on the screen, so I'm going to set the background to an ultra thin material. Well, this is looking pretty clean, but I'd like to do one more thing. When I'm in the state where I want to manually place markers, I want to disable the ability to search. So what I need to do then is to show this search field only if is manual marker is not true. So I can surround that entire H stack with an if clause that checks for that. And then if we had a bunch of markers displayed, when I change to that manual marker mode, I want to remove any search markers that might have already been in place there. So I'm going to attach an on change modifier to the toggle view based on the is manual marker variable. Now, whether we're turning it on or off, I want to clear all non destination markers, those red ones. So we don't need to know what the old and new value of that is marker manual is. So we can remove all of those from the closure. And here we can just call the map managers remove search results function again, passing in that model context. Well, time to test. Now I know that my preview is going to crash if I try this in this view and try to add one of those custom markers that I'm going to be adding. I still haven't sorted out that preview issue. And I want to add a new manual marker place mark. So I could do this, I could return to the Start tab and work from here. But rather than keep on switching back and forth here, let me just pin this preview. Now when I return to the Destination's Location view, that pinned preview is there as well. So let me select the Start tab preview. I'll go to the second tab and select Paris. And we can now see and test this view. So currently the tap marker placement is off. So we can operate just as we did before, but let's make sure everything is working. Let's do a search for museum. I can tap on one of those red markers to display the preview. And if I want to, I can add it to my destination. And one of those yellow markers, this Eiffel Tower is one that I found from a search and added previously. I'm going to tap on it, and up it comes, and I see that it did find a preview. Well, I'm now going to tap on that button to turn on manual marker placement. The red search markers all disappear, and I'm going to tap close to that Eiffel Tower marker, and this is better. I get a preview of it. And I want to use this one instead, so I'm going to give it the name Eiffel Tower. Now I'll update the name, and now I, I can add it to my destination save place marks. Now I have two, so let me zoom in a little closer. I'm going to tap on the one that I think is the one that I don't want. It is, and I can remove it. The other one I just placed is this one with the preview. Everything looks to be working just as I had planned it. As I discovered in the previous video, when I work on subsequent ones, I find that things can be improved in my code or the user experience. Since I'll be visiting locations where the language is not English, I want to turn off autocorrection for my text field entries for my markers. So in the location detail view, just after you set the text field style to a rounded border, turn off autocorrection. 
Well, that pretty much finishes it for this tab, for this app, but we still have lots more to cover. And I'm going to work on that first trip maps tab in the next set of videos. We'll discover how we can present our current location on the map by creating a new location manager service. There's still a lot more to learn as well in future videos, like changing the map appearance and getting distances and routes and directions to one of your place marks from your current location. So if you're enjoying this series, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And if this series is not yet completed, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you're notified when new videos are available. Otherwise, you can continue on with the series by checking out the next one in the playlist. Thanks for watching.